Well, Amy, thanks so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to chat. Definitely. So today I want to talk about how to say no and how to establish boundaries. That word boundaries is used a lot in yes. our culture today. And so first of all, what is the result of saying yes over and over again to the people around us? And I know a lot of the women that I work with and coach, yes is a common word that uh, right. is used. So what, what's the result of saying yes over and over again? Well, it's, it's funny that that you mentioned that because being from Southern California myself, we would call it being the totally girl where, will you do this for me? Totally, totally, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, and it, it, re it really becomes compulsory where you just instantly say, yeah, sure, I'll come to your rescue. And I think that there is a lot of social conditioning that although we like to think that we're extremely progressive, there is still, I think if you would take a group of people who identify as male, people who identify as female, and you said, you know, what is your guilt level around saying no? I think disproportionately women would say, yeah, I struggle with this tremendously. And the problem that I think happens is actually on a subconscious level, because consciously, I think it's quite noble. We think that we're coming to someone's rescue. We're being there for them. We've got all these narratives around, I can't let people down. But what I really believe is happening is if you are saying yes over and over again to shit you really don't want to do or at a severe cost to your own life, your own well-being, your own relationships, what you are sending is this message to yourself over and over that everyone else's wants, opinions, needs, and stances are more important than my own. And it's manifesting through your behavior that you think is noble, right? And so oftentimes I will say, constantly putting everybody else in front of yourself is poison disguised as nobility. Wow. Okay. Say that again. That's good. Constantly putting everyone else ahead of yourself is poison disguised as nobility. Good, good. Okay. Hmm. Because we, I mean, we're taught like, don't hurt that person's feelings. Don't let them down. Or, you know, or we also make up this idea that if I don't do it, no one else will. And um, I think even if we look at primitively how we're wired, you know, we're wired for connection. We want, even if we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, one of our major primitive needs is a sense of belonging. So even in our interpersonal relationships, if we feel like that is going to be thwarted or, um, threatened in any way, mm -hmm. we go, oh, I better make this person happy. I can't mm -hmm. deal with that upset. Mm -hmm. Especially okay. when it comes to family, because there's such a, oh a deep bond there. Yeah. So yes. my wife gets, uh, not recently, but, um, you know, you get invited to these stinking pampered chef parties. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. Movies, MLM. All that crap. Yeah. Yes. And so your friend just started whatever, and you like, oh, I should go to support them. Really? Do you want to buy any of that stuff? Well, I just want to be nice, right? right? I mean, they're so, take us through some things, because we may not even realize that we're saying yes to things that we don't want to say yes to. So right. that's an example, right? The, right, it's a great the, one. The party kind of thing. Give us some examples of either, whether it's family, friends, workplace, help us unpack some of those things in, the, in our in our mind that we may be saying yes to that we don't even realize we could say no to. Give me some options. Ooh, uh, well, I'll give you one from my own life. My husband and I decided around the time of the election that we did not want to do Christmas gifts anymore. And we were going to take all of the money that we would normally give to Christmas gifts and give it to philanthropic organizations that were aligned with our political leanings. And there were people in our family that were like, you can't just not do Christmas. And we were like, watch us, <laughs> watch us. We are doing that. We're doing Christmas, but we're doing it in a totally different way. So I think that one of the, one of the entry points for people listening is to, when you hear yourself say, I can't, most of the time, what you mean is I won't. Like, oh, I can't say, I can't not be there for my partner through this thing, or I can't just let that person move on their own without volunteering my truck or my time. I can't not do Christmas. I can't not do that gift exchange at the, at the office or 
whatever it is that we think we're not allowed to do, a lot of times it's also things that we don't believe we can speak up about. You and I were talking prior to recording just about sort of the the uh, various spiritual uh, influences that I've had over over my life that we have quite a quite a similarity to, and I see a lot of people who say I could never tell my family that I don't align with the religion I was raised in, or I could never tell my spouse what I really need in the bedroom. You know things like that where we make up this idea that I can't, mm -hmm. and it's not limited just to saying no or saying yes. It's limited to what we can give voice to. Period. Like mm -hmm. what what can I be vocal about? Um, yeah, so I think that it kind of spans over a myriad of, of mm -hmm. topics. Seems like family is a huge one. Huge. I can't say no to my mom or dad, or, you know, if, I, if I'm expected to be somewhere, expected to be at an event, expected to perform in a certain way, expected to talk and expected to dress in a certain way. Yep. Um, and then, or expected to even help my siblings in a certain way. Uh, yes. friends, of course, that's huge. Uh, lots of different things that you're supposed to show up to. And then even like you said, spirituality, even in the context sure. of a faith, um, community to go, this is the expected norm. So I couldn't say no right. to that. All right. So, Absolutely. um, and then the workplace, that's a, that's a tricky one, of course, um, because your job is connected to that. So that, that is a bit more tricky. It is. Yeah, it is. You know, and I think the, the other big place that we get hung up is when our saying no adversely affects somebody else. Mm -hmm. So for example, and this is where we get really caught up in caretaking for somebody else's emotions. Uh, for example, my, if we're talking about this whole spirituality piece, my mom has um, on multiple occasions invited me to church. And it's something that her specific affiliation is something that I actually find fairly offensive. And it, it's just not something that I want to participate in. That's and because she, you're a sinner. That's and right. You, you need <laughs> because to I'm a heathen. Yes. Yes. Because I'm a heathen. Um, and I'm pretty pumped about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, anyway, so her intent, like what she's doing is, is totally pure hearted. Like she's mm -hmm. not doing Positive it. Positive intention. Be, right. She's not being malicious. She's not saying I'm going to blatantly disrespect my daughter. So I also want to meet her with that same respect. But if, she, so I have told her, you know, thank you so much for the thought. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate that. I will make you this promise. If I ever change my mind, you'll be the first person to know. But it would really mean a lot to me to have some reciprocal respect. I don't give you books on Wiccan or astrology or, you know, winter solstice inv invites or things like that. So I would, I would just really appreciate, you know, some reciprocal respect here. I truly hope you can understand. Now, saying no in that situation. How did that, how'd that go over? Um, she, I try to give her examples of like, I'm not pushing my dogma, so please don't do the reverse. Sure. Um, one of the things that I've seen really consistently is when you come from that place of grace and kindness, mm -hmm. which is a cornerstone of sort of the model that I teach, mm -hmm. you can ask for a divorce. You can talk, ask your adult children to move out of the house. Mm -hmm. You can tell, you know, you can discuss some of the most polarizing topics, mm -hmm. but if you come from a place of grace and kindness, you are far more likely mm -hmm. to elicit that from the other person. You know, we naturally want to mirror emotion like that. So if you start off in, on a vulnerable tone, you're more likely to get vulnerability. And, and that's what I've seen consistently with her as well. And she was like, okay, you know, and she just kind of accepted it. Mm -hmm. Now, those moments though, if we, I know that it's painful for her. I sure. know that it hurts her tremendously. Right. She feel like she did everything she could and her daughter isn't, is going isn't, to isn't, is going to help. Right. And that's a, it's a burden she has to carry. It's not mine. You know, I'm like, if you want to carry the burden of my soul, knock yourself out, but I'm mm -hmm. chilling over here. Right. But so when it comes to that, I kind of go, there is pain there for her. Right. Right. There is pain there for her. And I think in so many situations we think I can't say no 
because it's going to inflict pain on somebody else. Mm -hmm. But what we're actually doing is we're adopting responsibility for something that's not ours to carry. Mm. So my is always come back to this mantra of I am responsible for my intention, not my reception. Mm -hmm. So if it's my intention to be malicious and be an asshole, then yeah, I should feel bad about that. I mm -hmm. should have guilt. I was being a dick. Mm -hmm. But if my intention is one of self-love, of, of autonomy and agency, of caring for her and kindness, I cannot be held responsible for somebody else's emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to let go of that reception. And I think far too often, that's where we get hung up is we're so attached to the reception. Mm -hmm. So in the process of trying to say no or set a boundary, there seems yeah. to be a lot of emotion, right? So there's emotion yes. in, in me of feeling like uh, maybe there's anger, there's resentment. Like if I actually get in touch with, if I go beyond, and it seems like people need to do this in order to set a boundary, to go beyond the feeling responsible, if I start to actually get down to what I really want, there can be some resentment and anger. Like I'm pissed. I'm like, oh God, why do I have to keep doing this? You know, oh, why, yeah. do, why do people keep wanting me? So in the midst of that energy though, that can come off as not gracious, not kind, how do I make that shift that you're talking about from that place of like, Ugh, sick of them, you know, doing this to me or asking me to mom, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Energy, right. Cause there's a lot of emotion there. How do I get through that in order to get to be at that place of grace? My goodness. That's a great question. I'm really glad you brought that up because I had a situation where when I first started speaking up with her, it kind of came to a head at the time when my father passed away in 07 and I had just a, a really rough exchange with her. And that was the first moment when I started to really be like, I came out of the heathen closet really. And said like, I don't, I don't subscribe to this. And so after that, I became incredibly combative and adversarial mm -hmm. and I wanted to fight. And a lot of it was anger from my youth of, uh, I think feeling robbed in a lot of ways. And so I had to kind of work through a lot of that anger. So what I would say to people who they're like, okay, great. So I just work on all my childhood shit and then I can start speaking up. No if we're talking about an immediate exchange like that, first off, anger is a secondary emotion. So it's always going to be our most easily accessible, but there's usually something beneath that. So if you notice that you get pissed at somebody over and over and over again, dig for the primary emotion. What is that really about? It's probably disappointment, maybe guilt, maybe shame, maybe frustration, overwhelm, maybe a feeling of being disrespected. Taken advantage but, of. Yes, exactly. And if you can excavate for that a little bit more, then you can see what's really problematic because when we're in the anger response, we're retaliatory. We just want to take someone into school and tell them why they're so shitty. Mm -hmm. And why are you doing that to me? And, and we usually have the fight or flight. We either become, you know, we become very combative or we acquiesce and give them whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And that's where the people pleasing tendency comes in. How can I make this stop? Let me just appease them. And then you say yes to something you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And then your partner gets an earful or mm -hmm. your therapist gets an earful, or you yes. tell somebody else how upset you are about this person taking advantage of you, but you mm -hmm. haven't been vocal. Mm -hmm. So my biggest suggestion in those moments is to breathe, mm -hmm. is to take one second to be really cognizant of what is about to come out of your mouth. Now, the other piece of that is if you are in a state of anger like that, you can revisit. You can actually say, I need to take a moment mm -hmm. or I'm not, I'm not so sure if I'm going to be available. Buy yourself some time. Mm -hmm. Ask, how soon do you need to know? Mm -hmm. um, and my favorite response is if someone says, I need to know now. If you need a response that quickly, then I'm going to have to politely decline. And you have your go-to phrase. If you need a response that quickly, I'm going to have to politely decline. You know, and you repetition over and over and over again. But I think it's, changing that gut response to say yes right away and just saying, 
I do need to look at my calendar or I would hate to say yes and then have to pull out later. Mm -hmm. I really do need to check things out. And if, if they say some, and, and again, sometimes people are more aggressive. Well, can you look at your calendar right now? I'm going to need to take a day or two, you know, like you have to have your, your statements and your phrasing sure. ready to go, you know, because I'll even say, I need to talk to my spouse. I need sure. to talk to my wife. You know what I mean? That's another way to say, Hey, Absolutely. we want to be on the same page, you know? In a pinch, you can go, hold that thought. I need to run to the bathroom real quick. Like anything, <laughs> anything to just buy time and not feel like you have to give an immediate response. Mm -hmm. um, but you also have to remember that they're coming to you with their agenda. Mm -hmm. And you need to be mindful of it just because their agenda is wrapped in a, is enveloped in a case of urgency and importance. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's urgent or important for you. Sure, sure. And it can be hard when people come to you in that cloak of emotion, like, oh my gosh, no one else can do it. I need so much help. And, and so you have to really weigh out, is this something that I do genuinely want to say yes to? And most mm -hmm. of the time we need a little bit of time to think about it. Mm -hmm. I have found that I will actually do things now out of honoring someone or intentionally wanting to invest in them. Yes. Even if I don't want to do whatever it is they're asking me to do. And that's, that's different than doing it out of responsibility, doing it out of, because I feel like I Absolutely. you know have to or whatever. Um, there are certain yes. things, whether it's with family members or friends where I go, um, I want to invest in them. I want to honor yes. them because they're my family member. They're asking me to do something that I, it just would not be my choice. I probably, you know, I'm going to have to work to enjoy it. Um, but I'm choosing to do it. Yes. Because I value the relationship and I value them. And I know that this will be enjoyable or encouraging to them. Yes. Um, but that's Beautiful. out of choice, you know, and then I have to realize afterwards, if I'm, if I'm resentful after the fact, that's on me, right? Because I'm actually yeah. choosing to be there. It's conscious choice. Yes. Yeah, it's a conscious choice. Well, it's also something that you're pointing to here is it's enveloped in a totally different emotion. So you're not talking about an emotion of guilt, obligation. Mm -hmm. uh, what if they don't like me? What if they don't approve of me? All of the fear of repercussion. It's a place of love, mm -hmm. compassion, being invested wanting to be a support. And so I think that it's a very different come from to use a really coachy word or phrase. It's what's the come from? What's my motivation behind this? And, mm -hmm. and I too will do s similar choices because it's the woman I want to be, mm -hmm. right? Or it's the man you want to be. And that, mm -hmm. I think that is a different, again, it's a different motivation. I, and, and it, it also comes back to emotional intelligence. Like how do you feel around this decision? Mm -hmm. And we're so used to doing what I like to call the cognitive override where we just, well, he did that for me and I did that for him. And, but we don't like feel into like, what feels right? What would be the most powerful choice for me? Mm -hmm. And I think something that's really important to look at with these situations regardless if you do decide to say yes to something or not, it's at what cost? Because mm -hmm. there's times when it's something that it's just not, you just don't really want to help them move, but you really want to support them or you want to be there for them. And, and you have the time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to throw off oh, I'm already at my max and now I said yes to this other thing and now I don't get to have date night or I don't get to have time with my kids or I can't invest in a, a project or my health the way I want to. You have to make sure that the saying yes isn't at a severe cost to you. Mm -hmm. That's another kind of um, delineation, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Okay. So uh, I find that one of the strategies that people tend to use if they're setting a boundary is apologizing in the process, like profusely, oh. you know, trying to, once again, it seems like it's caring for the other person's response or emotions. Can apologizing be part of the boundary setting? Is that appropriate? Is it not appropriate? What have you found? Well, my first 
my first uh, kind of rule that I really live by and try to try to teach is to not lie. So don't make up some sort of noble bullshit lie about. Yeah. I mean, I personally think that's radically bad karma <laughs> to say like, oh, my grandma died or, you know, like, just don't fucking lie. I find that the most vulnerable you can be to say something like, I'll be really honest with you. I feel so incredibly stretched to my max. I don't think I can put one more thing on my plate. I would love to be there for you. And I just don't think I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. I don't, my personal thought is I don't like to say I am sorry unless I've done something unbefitting to myself, that it's something out of alignment to me. However, I do think we can use the words I'm sorry to embody empathy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fine to empathize and to say, I know you are so up a creek or I know you're really having a rough go and I have been there myself. I wish I could come through for you. I'm not able to this time or mm -hmm. it's, I just can't, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I think it, it's a sliding scale. It depends, but and it also depends on how much you really wanted to be there for them and you just can't mm -hmm. or, you know, but I would go with the, with the rule of if you're not really that sorry, don't say sorry, <laughs> right? Like don't lie about it. Um, but you can also use empathy, compassion, concern, like those are all really viable, but you don't really have anything to apologize for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like there really isn't. Mm. And I think that also is in direct tandem with over explanation mm. where we want to report all of the reasons why. Well, see, I've been, I've been so under the gun at work and I've been so stressed out. And then I have this Christmas play and then I've got this, that, this thing that I've got to do for the kids. And, and it's none of that matters. None of that matters. All that matters is that you genuinely care about that person and you're not able to come through this time. I hope you can understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you, when you set a boundary like this, when I hear your language, when I hear you talking to your mom, you sound so um, like brash. You sound so like you're being nice, but you're, you're just, you know, you're, 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 people don't talk this way, Amy. People just <laughs> go with the flow. Like, you know, yeah. you're not, you're not going with the flow, Amy, is what I feel like. like yeah. Would you agree? Like, you're not a go with the flow person. I feel like you're just against things. Like you just don't. I don't know. <laughs> Are you being adversarial on purpose right now? <laughs> I'm teasing you, you because I love you poking it. me. I, 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 you know, it does feel different. You know what I yeah. mean? Now I can set boundaries like this. I I'm very comfortable yep. with this. Uh, part of it's my personality because I'm a type A and I'm a bit driven and I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a pretty direct aggressive person to say. Okay. The least. Uh, so uh, but the way that you're talking for people who don't have the ability or, you know, haven't done that, it can, it can feel a little um, awkward. Uh, absolutely. You of course, I mean? because we are taught from a very early age to do everything. But I mean, think about, we have so many phrases like don't open up a can of worms, don't rock the boat, sweep it under the rug. We have so many statements to say, shut the fuck up and go with the flow. Yeah. And my whole motto, it's funny that you bring that up because I am very not go with the flow. I mean, I remember <laughs> to give you, to give you sort of some context in in high school, I went to a, a conservative Christian school and they were praise teaching it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Come Lord. On, which one? Which one? Lift, lift it up. Um, Arrowhead Christian Academy in Redlands. Oh, look at you. All right. Man. Um, yeah, Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> the eagles. And so we we had Bible, right? And so they would talk about Abraham sacrificing Isaac. And so I'd be like, now wait. And putting my hand up. Like, come on. So that one. Ugh. I'm yes. I mean, I was the I mean, <laughs> we weren't allowed to wear ripped jeans. So I would duct tape all the holes in my jeans and I would go. So do I look more like a Christian now? Do you think Jesus is may, way more down with me now? Oh, so, you're the worst. So yeah, I definitely didn't go with the flow. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> Jesus hates ripped jeans. That's right. And bare shoulders, apparently. Um, but yeah, so I, I really, all, I was the one like, why? Why though? Why? Why? That doesn't, not just because God said, I'm going to need a way better reason for the, than that. Sure, sure. And so 
I have, I have always kind of bucked against the system. However, I definitely got caught in who I was supposed to be and not supposed to be. And, and like I said, prior to delivering that sort of conversation with my mom, there was a good 10 year stint of me figuring out sure. why I was responding from anger mm. and doing a lot of study around personal growth and communication and how you can actually affect change. And if you think about it, um, if we take, if we distill it back down to a scenario that we can all imagine, we're driving along, maybe we accidentally cut somebody off and then they start honking and giving you the finger and like, fuck you, your response our immediate response is one of two things, fight or flight. We either mimic that same energy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, go to hell. You know, we mimic or we cower and go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm. We don't ever go, you know what? You're right. I probably shouldn't have done that. We don't <laughs> respond with rationale. Sure. sure. So the same is true when we're learning how to communicate. Our yes. gut instinct yes. is wired by fight or flight. Right. We are going to want to- Amp up. Amp up. It's yeah. part of our defense. Or apologize. Or apologize. So it's, yeah. it's just at least having that awareness of like, which one am I? Mm -hmm. And then noticing, okay, I want to I communicate differently because I want to evoke a different response. I want a more productive conversation. Mm -hmm. Most people, like if you go to your wife and you yell and scream about, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you? How, well, all you had to do was pay that one bill. You had one job to... How likely is it that she's going to go, you know what? You're right, honey. I'm going to get right on that. I can't right. wait. Right. No. So we respond, we respond based off of our emotion instead of really calculating what do I want to elicit from this person? Mm -hmm. And that's a skill set. It did not happen overnight at all. And that's why one of, oops, one of the things that I advocate for all the time is and I help people a lot with semantics and verbiage and specific phrases, but tell me what you want to say. Let me help you rephrase it. Let me help you with a way to make it land better and so then good. go practice it. So you have good. over and over and over in the mirror. Yeah. Really important. And so with that practicing, then I'm assuming it gets easier over time. Yes, absolutely. Well, I just had a student tell me yesterday um, and this is when, you know, like it's, it started to become, um, embedded in the subconscious part of your mind. She said, I had three conversations, three tough conversations, and they all just flowed out. And, you know, three months ago, four months ago, I would never have even, I would have hidden from those people. I would have yeah. never brought anything up and it just flowed out mm -hmm. and I've had those situations myself now for, for a number of years. But one of the things that I teach around this in particular is a gearing up process, like prepping for these things, how to show up in a way that you're really proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, instead of, I need, I need that person to see it my way. I need them to understand me. I need them to agree. Mm. Relinquishing the attachment to that and really getting conscientious of how do I want to show up? What's the verbiage I want to use? How do I want to deliver it? Because so much of it is your cadence and your rhythm and your, I really think the more you can come from a vulnerable place, which is hard for all of us because it involves mm -hmm. risk and mm -hmm. we're not, we're told vulnerability is weakness. I think mm -hmm. it's a superpower. So I don't know if I answered your question. No, but it's, it's wonderful. I think you were poking at me, and I didn't yeah. take your bait. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the I, I the word that comes to my mind is clarity. Yeah, you're helping bring clarity to what you really want, and then speak it very clearly in a way that is uh, with intention to bring care and concern, but at the same time represent yourself in a way that's very clear. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful, and and. Yeah. And then it, I think that it requires the other person to then go, um, hmm, okay, well, what do I want? You know, what's important to me? You know, right. it, it requires the same level of clarity there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's super powerful, super powerful. Um, yeah. And what do you, what is the result of being able to say no over time? So we talked in the beginning about mm -hmm. the result of saying yes over and over again. Right. What is, the, what is the result in someone's life if they're going, okay, 
I don't know if I can do this, you know, almost mm -hmm. cast a vision for them of what the results will be in their life if they're able to represent themselves and say no with that level of clarity. Yeah. I think it really dist distills down to a confidence and a belief in self-worth. So if we're talking about saying yes and putting everybody in front of yourself, Send your, sends that subconscious message that everyone else's wants, opinions, and needs are more important than yours, mm -hmm. then the antithesis is also true. That if I start to say no, I start to send the subconscious message that my wants, opinions, and needs are important. Right. And then that message begins to manifest in all decision making, uh, whether it's do I want to date this person or do I want to get involved in this business uh, collaboration or do I want to purchase this thing? We start looking at things through a lens of our own personal intrinsic value. And I think you can work in multiple ways. So you can start with sort of the, the fake it till you believe it, mm -hmm. sort of where you go through the action of like, I'm scared shitless to say no, but I'm going to start doing it to foster the self-worth. Or you can work the opposite way where you start with really digging into self-worth and believing in, you know, mantras and a whole slew or arsenal of personal growth tools that you can use in that arena and then bolster that so that you have the confidence to go say no. So you can kind of work with whatever is the most accessible for you, whatever mm -hmm. feels the most resonant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the trade-off is truly believing in that what you want matters. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. All right, so you have the opportunity for people to work with you to actually help increase their confidence and help them learn yeah. to say no. Um, I know that uh, on your website, thejoyjunkie.com, which we will um, link to in the show notes. Of course, if you're listening, you can swipe up on your phone and, and uh, find it there. Tell me about that name, The Joy Junkie. Give me, give me the backstory. Well, part of it was very much a business decision because I figured – if I ever went into chiropractic or if I went into auto parts, I could have joy junkie mechanics, you know, like I figured <laughs> it was something that I could use no matter what my niche was. And if I switched modalities and right now I'm, I'm actually training to be a hypnotherapist as well. So there was, I, I knew that I would accumulate different things and, and that was a piece of it. But the, the deeper, more life coachy version of it was, uh, you know, I look around and I see so many people who are, who are addicted to things that aren't bringing them joy. Mm. And we know that the two primary human drivers are the pursuit of pleasure, the avoidance of pain. Mm -hmm. So everything that we're doing is because of how we want to feel. If we want this job, if we want this baby, if we want to be partnered, if we want to make this money, it's because of a feeling that we want to feel. And I thought, what would shift in our life if we were just as addicted to our joy as mm -hmm. we are to our devices or, mm -hmm. you know, booze or work, mm -hmm. right? So that's, uh, yeah, that's the impetus. What brings you the most joy in your life? What things? It doesn't have to be just one thing. It could be, you oh. know. Okay. Um, definitely whiskey. Uh, definitely my, my husband, who I always refer to as Mr. Smith. Uh, I love coloring. Uh, like the, those like adult coloring books yeah, yeah, with yeah. Uh, mandalas and gel pens. Deer. That's a new thing that's so huge for me coming from Southern California to Charlotte. I'm like, there's wildlife out here. So yeah, yeah. You, do running. you like to kill them or do you like to look at them? Or no, you... no, I don't like to kill them. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I, I just love to see them running through my yard. It just, I, you know, always felt like I had to go to a zoo to see that. And here sure. I'm just like, there, and there's squirrels everywhere. I feel like Cinderella, like they're going to come help me get dressed in the morning. So uh, let's see what else. Cheese, ice cream, my home, my best friend, my brother, my team creating, like actually creating something, bringing something, like even if it's yeah. a Halloween costume, I just get like, oh, I love that. It brings me so much joy. Um, and of course I have to say, watching people transform their lives, you know, doing something that they never thought they could do. And I hear it all the time. And that just blows my mind that with the myriad of, of experts that people can 
go to and listen to and invest in that they chose me to be their mm. guide. And then they actually did the stuff. Like it has, it has nothing to do. I can't make them do right. it. Right. But then when, when they find that personal power, oh my God, that lights me up. I cry every time. It's amazing. So good. That's so good. All right. For those of you listening, I do want to encourage you to check out a workshop that Amy has online. It is for free. Has the longest title ever. So I'm just going <laughs> to go to uh, thejoyjunkie.com slash workshop. And we'll have that in the show notes, of course. The title is The Five-Step Game Plan <laughs> High Achieving Women Use to Banish Self-Doubt Plus Perfectionism Access no, to banish self-doubt and perfectionism, access killer confidence and enoughness, and finally find their voice and happiness again without worrying about what everyone <laughs> else thinks. <sighs> yes. Okay, so yeah. to get the free workshop, go to <laughs> thejoyjunkie.com slash workshop, and we'll have that obviously in the show notes. So oh, Amy, dude, all right, fun. so uh, if somebody is wrestling with this right now and setting boundaries and, and, and feeling like, ah, I just want to be a nice person. I can't say no. Yeah. Like what would, what would you say to them today? I would say that saying no has nothing to do with being nice or being mean, um, that you can, and this is one of the reasons why I started teaching how to speak up is we buy into this idea that if I say no, if I speak up for myself, then I'm being a dick then I'm being an asshole. But you can say no with compassion, with grace, with kindness, with love, with concern, with empathy. So I think that's, it's a fallacy to even think from the beginning that saying no um, equals meanness, right? So that's one thing that I, I would advocate dismantling. But if you, also, if you don't know where to start, the first place I would look at is what do I constantly complain about or chronically obsess about as far as this person at work is always saying this to me and maybe your partner gets an earful, but you never actually address it with the person at work. Or maybe it's your therapist who gets an earful, but you never really address it with your partner who, is your, who you're pissed about. And I'm not talking about blowing off steam or venting or clearing something. I'm talking about a perpetual thing that you bitch about and complain about, even if it's in your own mind, like, oh, so-and-so's mm -hmm. gonna ask that again. God, uh, uh, why can't they see how much I have going on? If that's the routine happening over and over in your mind and you haven't taken any action to give voice to it in a clear way, then that's on you. But you don't know that if you're just locked in your victimhood. So that's the first place to kind of check in and go, with whom and when are those situations where, where I stay silent, you know? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Cool. You guys check out Amy Smith, Amy E. Smith, because there's probably a bazillion Amy Smiths. Exactly. I'm like, if your name was Amy Smith, wouldn't you use the I e? know. Amy <laughs> Smith uh, at thejoyjunkie.com. So Amy, thank you so much for taking time. I love what you're doing. I love thank your you. clarity. I love your heart of wanting Thank to uh, be kind and gracious and yet at the same time represent yourself. So yeah, very beautiful. Thanks awesome. for what you're doing in the world. Oh, I, I have had such a blast. Thank you so much for having me.